Amazon and Google, no question, they are encroaching even further into our homes. They're collecting more data about us as they go. Uh, just yesterday, we covered Amazon buying the Wi-Fi systems maker Eero. How does that fit into this broader strategy? So Amazon sees an opportunity with its uh, its Echo smart speaker and, and its uh, Ring doorbell uh, company that it purchased last year to really be a, a kind of force to be reckoned with in, uh, in home technologies, whether that's you know, shopping with your voice, controlling other gadgets, televisions, uh, thermostats. And this, uh, this wireless uh, purchase that they made yesterday of a company out of San Francisco is seen as just sort of the next step in, uh, in that evolution. John, do you see more pros or cons with Amazon and Google living with us? I mean, I, I think that in 2019, you, the way, you know, when you look at the tech landscape, you can see that, you know, tech with all the promise of doing, of doing good and changing society and giving us wonderful tools to enable uh, us to do things is also starting to encroach upon our lives. And uh, I think that the idea of having a open channel uh, for these tech companies into the data stream for my home and I think Matt will talk about some of the passive data collection that's taking place. I think it's, it's, uh, it is not good. I don't think it's good for consumers. I don't think it's good for our country. I don't think it's good for innovation and for startups. It, it, you know, on one hand, when you put it that way, it is terrifying, Matt. And you wonder if consumers actually understand what is happening. Talk to us about that passive data collection and what these companies are collecting about us that we may not even realize. So in the last uh, year or two, both uh, Amazon, which is sort of seen as a leader in smart speakers, and Google right behind them, started talking to, uh, to their smart device uh, maker partners about increasing the amount of data that uh, they transmit as a matter of course back to that central hub. So what uh, both companies are trying to require now would essentially mandate that any time a, a smart light bulb, for instance, uh, is toggled, if you go over and, and, and flip the switch, that uh, the companies get a record of that, right? And their, their point is they want to use this to improve the user experience, to make all these new features based upon that knowledge of what's going on in your home. But what's key is, is that it's not with the user actually doing anything, right, to the smart speaker. That's correct, yeah. It's, uh, it's not necessarily, you know, when you invoke Alexa or Google Assistant, it's any time the device uh, status changes. So how, Matt, first of all, how can consumers protect themselves? So on, on this um, technology, there's not a whole lot of granularity in user control. Uh, both Amazon and Google offer you options to, to go back in um, and delete data that the, the companies have accumulated. They're, they both have websites where you can make that happen. But in terms of sort of stopping the, the devices from informing the companies in the first place, there's not really a way to do that other than to unplug them from, uh, from the smart home system. John, what do you think the social repercussions of this are? I mean, in the short term, I think that, um, you know, we've seen, you know, a, f a few incidences of, you know, fairly scary and weird hacks that have taken place where people have hacked into, you know, other people's smart homes and started, you know, people speaking through, like, baby monitors or adjusting their thermostats. We've seen sort of software upgrades go haywire and, um, and uh, reset people's thermostats and then frozen pipes. And so we've seen sort of small isolated incidences. I think over time as you start to see the entire home get connected. And in particular, I think the point which Matt's making here, which is key, is that these, the, the, these companies are trying to turn these devices into the central hub that passively collects all the data for the home. And then if that hub either gets hacked or if the company wishes to use it for advertising uh, data or for other data, um, they're free to do that. And it's, I, I think you could see the entire home being sort of at the bequest of a single technology provider. And the consumer's not really understanding that that's actually what they're buying in the first place. Matt, what are the companies saying about this? Because, you know, I, you know, I presume Amazon would say, well, unless you say Alexa and you turn it on, it's not collecting this data about you. Oh, on, on the contrary, they are, even if you, you don't invoke, uh, invoke Alexa. But one of the, the things, the point Amazon made as, as I talked with them about this is, you know, listen, we, we you know, value consumer privacy, which is something a lot of the, the big technology companies say. And they say they explicitly do not use this uh, for advertising at this time, right? That the, the data they glean on what you do with your home appliances is not going to be used to inform uh, any sort of advertising. Now, Google, um, which uh, didn't uh, comment uh, to us for this story, has not made uh, a similar promise, and it's sort of unclear what they're, uh, what they're doing with it. 
Go ahead, John. Sorry, I think there's two important points there, and, and we saw this with Facebook, you know, going through the Cambridge Analytica episode and beyond, is that Facebook, this distinction of uh, are they using it for third-party advertising data or are they using it to inform internal data sets is important, and I think that some of the companies are glossing over that. And so um, I think that they use this and they're using the data for internal data sets, which gives them the ability to more finely grain target customers for a whole bunch of services. That's the first point. The second point is relates to data, which I think is critical here, is that you know we have all these amazing services today that companies are giving us for free software services. And I think what's important is that you know quarter after quarter these companies are managing to get more and more margin out of their uh, and profit out of these products. And that's happening because they're monetizing the data behind these services at more and more granular levels. And so I think the fact that these, you know, we have a handful of companies that are becoming massive data collectors on all sort of quarters of our life is, uh, is, is a problem. I don't think it's good for society or good for uh, users or for technology or for startups. Now, while I have you, John, I want to talk to you about another advertising market, a small but growing one, is, and that is podcasting. You were an early investor in Gimlet and Anchor, uh, companies that have been bought now by Spotify. You know, uh, people who listen to podcasts love them, but it is still a niche market. What more activity do you expect to see in the podcast market? So I see, I mean, the, the podcast market is, uh, it's related to these uh, smart speakers because it's also a voice, um, it, it's a voice interface. But I think what we've seen in the last five years is this sort of emergence of what I now see as a, a new wave of innovation and of, um, of development that's coming into the podcast market. And so the podcast market really started uh, around 2000. It was a small niche market. But about five years ago, we at Betaworks decided to, uh, we saw a handful of things which I think were a sort of healthy mix of intuition and, and data, uh, where we saw on the data side that you know people's phones and battery life were getting better and that the Bluetooth was more stable and people were connecting to their cars and using their phone as their primary device in their cars. And if you think that Americans on average have about two hours a day, that they are not connected to a visual interface, and these, the auditory podcasting interface is this wonderful, deep, rich uh, interface for storytelling, uh, both fictional and non-fictional. And we're seeing you know, a, a significant growth there. And the acquisition in the last week of, um, of these two companies, two of the biggest acquisitions to date uh, in the space, I think it's the beginning of a, of a whole new wave of, of media and of, um, uh, of interaction in the, uh, in the online space.